All right, this is the second review that we're going to do here over factoring. So we're just going to get into a couple more advanced factoring techniques. Just want to quickly remind you once again that factoring is the whole idea of taking a polynomial and breaking it down into a polynomial times another polynomial, or maybe three polynomials times each other. But it's all about breaking a polynomial down. We would like to break it down to linear factor polynomials if we can, but it's not always possible. So let's pick up where we left off and let's talk about factoring what we call uh, trinomials, uh, factoring trinomials with binomial factors. So we're, for example here, we're talking about something that basically looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. And that's a one, two, three trinomial because again there's three terms, uh, terms or anything separated by a plus sign. And we want to break this down into a binomial times a binomial. So what we have here is we have something times x something times x here and then we have something back here and something back here. So I'm just kind of putting squiggly lines right there to kind of hold the place for values obviously. They're going to be numbers. Now we have to understand that this first something times this first something because again we're basically doing reverse foiling. We're reverse foiling and we all remember what the FOIL stands for, first, outside, inside, last. So if we would take this first term times this first term, that has to generate the AX squared. Obviously, X times X makes the X squared. So these two values, whatever these numbers have to be, have to multiply to make A. These back numbers have to multiply to make the C. That comes from the last, from the L, from FOIL. And then the other two parts, the, um, the outside, the something times x times this value back here, they have to multiply and then add with the inside values. So again, that's kind of the complicated part is once you figure out what values make A and what values make C, you have to make sure that the outside and the inside terms add up or combine um, to create the BX in the middle. So let's look at a couple easy examples here. First example we're going to look at is X squared minus 7X plus 12. This is a nice simple trinomial and notice there's a 1 in front of this X squared. When there's a 1 in front of the X squared it makes it a lot easier. So again I'm going to create my two binomials here and because of that 1 it's really easy. The only, the only way in the world to get a X squared is with a 1x and a 1x. And again, you could put the ones there in front if you need to. Now I got to think about 12. 12 could be, for example, a, uh, a 6 and a 2. Now the only problem with that is if I multiply, I do get the x squared, I do get the 12, but I get a 2x on the outside and a 6x on the inside. Now a 2x and a 6x can make an 8x or make a 4x if you would use subtraction. 8x and 4x, none of those are going to make the negative 7x in the middle. So we're going to scratch that idea out. Next we can try 3 and 4. Again, I'm going to get the x squared in front, the 12 in the back. Now I've got to check the outside 4x, the inside 3x, and a 4x and a 3x could definitely make a 7x in the middle. So I need a 3 and a 4. And the last thing I've got to figure out is the signs I need here. And I do need them to multiply to make a positive 12 but combine to make a negative 7, which means they both have to be negative. That way I get a positive 12 in the back and I get a negative 4x and a negative 3x in the middle combined to make the negative 7x. So that right there is um, the complete factorization for the trinomial x squared minus 7x plus 12. And notice that I was able to take a polynomial and turn it into a polynomial times another polynomial, both of which are linear. Let's look at another one here, x squared minus x plus 20. Again, I got to, uh, it's a nice easy problem with I got that 1x in front, so I got an x and x, it's the only way in the world to make that x squared in front. And then 20, I'm thinking 10 and 2. 10 and 2, so that's going to get a 2x and a 10x, and never going to make a negative 1x in the middle. Next, I'm thinking about 5 and 4, that makes 20. And a 4x and a 5x on the outside and inside can definitely make a negative 1. So I need a 5 and I need a 4. Now I just got to worry about what signs I need. I need them to add to make negative x. And well, I noticed that this might be kind of impossible. Wait a minute, because if I have a negative 5 and a positive 4 here, that's going to make my 
4x, negative 5x, O and I, outside, inside, to get the negative x. But that's going to generate a negative 20. I needed a positive 20 right there. So um, this could potentially be a problem that looks like it's possible to do, but technically is actually impossible. Now, um, of course, you're going to sit there and say that I made the mistake, but of course I made this mistake on purpose to show you that sometimes it can look like it could be done, but it really can't. But obviously, if this plus sign was a minus sign, then all of a sudden this would work, where we have the negative 20x, or the, sorry, the negative 20 gets generated in the back. All right, let's take a look at a... Um, Another one here that's a little bit different because we're going to put a 2 in front of the x squared. So 2x squared plus x minus 15. Now, a little bit different here. Still not too bad. Again, I need my two sets of parentheses here for my binomials. i got to think, how can I generate a 2x squared? Well, it's easy because that's a prime number. There's only one way in the, drill, the, in the world to generate a 2x squared, and that's with a 2x and an x. So I need 2x times x makes my 2x squared. That's easy. Now it's kind of a trial and error thing. In the back, I need that negative 15. So immediately I'm thinking 5 and 3 to get 15. There's not too many other options between 15 or other than 15 and 1. So let's see if this is going to work out. On the outside, I'm going to get a 6x. On the inside, I'm going to get a 5x. And that does seem to make sense. A 6x and a 5x can make a 1x. So I'm going to put a 5 right here and a 3 right here. Now i got to worry about the signs. I need it to be a positive x, so I need the 6 to be positive. That's a 6x on the outside. A minus 5x in the middle will generate the positive x, and it also will cause the negative 5 and the 3 to generate the negative 15. See another example here, 2x squared plus 9x. Sorry, my handwriting's getting sloppy here. Plus 9. Once again, I'm going to make my two trinomials here. I'm going to take the trinomial and make two binomials. And the only way in the world to make a 2x squared is with a 2x and an x. And again, i got to think 9. First thing that pops in my head is 3 and 3. So that's going to be a 6x on the outside, a 3x on the inside. That's going to work out perfect. A 6x and a 3x can make the 9x in the middle. So a plus 3, plus 3. Everything's positive. You don't have to worry about anybody ever being negative. Now watch out. Sometimes we'll throw one at you that kind of looks a little funny, a little bit out of place. 13x plus 6 plus 5x squared. Now, the first thing I notice with this one is it's very out of order. I want to put this all in the right order. So I'm going to move the 5x squared to the front, the 13x to the middle, and the plus 6 to the back. So don't ever worry about it. If it's not in the right order, you could quickly put it in the right order. So set up my parentheses here. The only way in the world to generate a 5x squared is a 5x and an x. 6, I'm thinking 6 and 1. We could try 6 and 1. That's going to generate a 5x on the outside and a 6x on the inside. A 5x and a 6x can make a 1 or an 11, not going to make a 13. So next I'm thinking about 2 and 3. That's going to be a 15x on the outside and a 2x on the inside. Now that seems like it's going to work, right? 15 and 2. But let's see why it wouldn't work, actually. Because I need the 15 to be positive and the 2 to be negative. So I'm going to make a negative 2 there and a positive 3 right here. That's going to generate a 15x and a negative 2x. And a 15x minus 2x does make 13x, but notice that's going to make a negative 6 on the back. Negative 2 times 3 makes a negative 6. And I, I certainly don't want a negative 6 in the back. I need a positive 6. So this is one where i got to do a little bit more thinking, and sometimes it could be simply just switching the numbers around. So let me try the 3 here and the 2 here. That's going to generate a 10x on the outside, 3x on the inside, and boom, there's my 13x. I need a positive 3 here and a positive 2 here to get the 6x on the out on the very end term and that 13x on the in the middle. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and um, quickly talk about grouping, factoring by grouping here. So um, usually we factor by grouping when we have four or more terms potentially. So um, this is factor by grouping. So here's a couple examples. We got x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x my, uh, plus 6. So when you factor by grouping, I got four terms here. And again, I'm going to look at these these first two terms and these last two terms. So in these first two terms, what can I pull out that's common? Let's use the remove the common factor factoring technique here. So I notice that both terms have at most an x squared. So if I take out an x squared, 
Take an x squared away from x cubed, I got an x. Take the x squared away from the negative 2x squared, I got a negative 2 left over. Now let's back, back at these terms. What's common? I notice there's a 3 common. But I actually want to take out a negative 3, and you'll see why here in a second. I'm going to take out a negative 3. That's going to leave behind an x right there, and that's actually going to leave behind a negative 2 right there because the negative 3 and the negative 2 make the positive 6. Now, the reason why I noticed I want to take out the negative 3 is because I see these common terms now. I see that both terms, the front and the back, have this x minus 2. That's the idea of factor by grouping. Group the first two together, group the last two together, and try to get something common to pull out. Notice the negative 3, though. Be careful. That made a negative 2 back here. That would generate the positive 6. So now I could actually factor out the x minus 2, since that's common between this first term and this second term. And I'm left with the x squareds left over and the minus 3s left over. And that is factored by grouping. Now notice the x squared minus 3 looks like it potentially be a difference of perfect squares, but unfortunately 3 is not a perfect square. All right, let's try another one here. We got x cubed plus 5x squared minus 5x minus 25. Again, I'm going to look at these first two terms and the last two terms. The first thing I notice here is I could plot an x squared. That's going to leave me with x plus 5. And now I'm looking for an x plus 5 to come out of here. And I notice I've got to take out that negative 5 again. That's going to leave me with an x plus 5, exactly what I was looking for. Again, negative x right there, or negative 5x, excuse me, and there would be the negative 25 when I would distribute. So now I'm going to factor out the common x plus 5 factor, and I'm left with an x squared minus 5. That's left over. So I took this out, took this out, stuck it in front here. I'm left with the x squared minus, uh, the x squared minus 5 left over right there. Um, let's take a look at one more. Um, factor by grouping problem here. Uh, let's see here. We got 8x to the fifth minus 6x squared plus 12x cubed minus 9. So I'm going to look at these first two terms and these last two terms here. I notice between 8 and 6 I can pull out a 2. That's going to leave me be, oh, I could also pull out, oh, I could pull out an x squared, huh? There's an x squared common. So that's going to leave me behind a 4x to the third, because I had 5x's, I took two away, minus a 3, just a 3, because the x squared got completely taken out. Back here, let's see, between a 12 and a 9, I think I could take away a 3. And let's see here, that's going to be 4x cubed and a minus 3. And now that I noticed something. That's something I was looking for, the 4x cubed minus 3, 4x cubed minus 3. I think you can always check with distribution. That's 12x cubed minus 9. So now I'm going to take that 4x cubed minus 3 out. And what am I left over? I took it out of here. I got a 2x squared left over. Took it out of here. I got a plus 3 left over. And that's factored by grouping. So those are our basic factoring techniques. Just be aware that any, you could always use multiple techniques. Maybe you take something out, remove something from all the terms, and then you could factor the difference of cubes. Or take something out, and then you can do a perfect square trinomial. Or take something out, and then you can do a trinomial factoring. Or take a value out of all four terms, and then you can do grouping. So always be aware there's multiple techniques that you can utilize in order to factor. So sometimes you've got to put all the different factoring techniques together. But we went through the very basic factoring techniques, and hopefully that's a quick review of a factoring for you.